Welcome to the Wellness Abundance Podcast. I'm Melissa King, your podcast host, certified master health coach, certified personal trainer, and founder of Wellness Abundance Coaching. The purpose of this podcast is to share healthy lifestyle tips to empower you to design the abundant life you want and deserve. I'll chat with inspiring people who have built a strong foundation to build a life they love. I believe we all have the power within ourselves to create wellness abundance in all areas of our life. We simply need to find the courage within ourselves to take action. Our vision for this podcast is to help you create wellness abundance in your life with clarity, empowerment, and flexibility. Grab your favorite beverage and enjoy the episode. My friend Landon Gilfillan is back on the podcast sharing her passion for gardening. During this episode, we talk about growing your own food to be self-sustaining, how you could start your first garden regardless of where you live, the produce that grows the fastest, and so much more. Landon truly is an expert in gardening and is a great go-to for your gardening needs. I was super inspired to start my own vegetable garden after our conversation, and I'm so excited to utilize Landon as a really great resource when I start my garden and as I continue to grow my garden. And Landon has so many great resources on her website and on her YouTube channel that you really can get so much information from there. So... I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I did. Welcome back to the Wellness Abundance Podcast. I'm so excited to have my friend Landon Gilfillan, and I said it right this time, right? You did. (laughs) Yes, yay. Um, Back to talk about one of her passions, gardening. And so we're just going to dive right in. So you know Landon from the previous podcast episode about nutrition and all that good stuff. So today we're going to talk a lot about gardening. So Landon, welcome back. I'm so excited to have you back. So first of all, real quick, I'm, you know, I'm all about, you know, supporting other women, you know, female entrepreneurs with their businesses. Um, But there was a little bit of selfishness with this one with me. (laughs) because I am not very knowledgeable about gardening. So I know you are an expert at it and you're really passionate about it. So part of me really wanted to have you on so I can learn more about this. Um, So yeah, so let's just dive right in and just start, if you wouldn't mind just sharing, like what led you to gardening? What piqued your interest in it? Well, we were talking about this right before we got on because I kind of had an epiphany literally in the last week about where my, my gardening passion started. Now, if you go to my website or read anything where I talk about my beginning, I always hearken back to my mother. And I remember being out in the garden with her as a child, every summer, we would always plant flowers that we didn't do vegetables or herbs. We did flowers. So petunias and rose moss. And my mom had this gorgeous um, rose garden. So that was kind of my background, you know, just being outside. It was a normal habit to plant a garden every summer. Um, but then, uh, I don't want to skip over the patio garden, but I'm just jumping from that to when I started actually starting a vegetable garden in my, I it was 30, I was 30 or 31. Cause I had just gotten married and I was pregnant with my first daughter. And I sit there and I've wondered so many times, how did I get from this to vegetable gardening? Where did that start? Cause that, that wasn't a part of my background. It wasn't something that I was talking about that I remember talking about with friends. I didn't have anyone saying, Hey, Landon, you should grow a vegetable garden. And um, so this past week I realized that was just like a natural outpouring of my background as a nutritionist. I was in that kind of alternative nutrition world. I was reading a lot about at that time, GMOs were really starting to get a lot of attention. Um, Organic was just really becoming a thing that was in 2009. Um, so these words were just starting to bud on the surface and I was reading a lot of material about them. And I imagine I was just like, Ooh, I need to know more about this. And I want to learn more about, um, these foods, you know, and why they're being altered the way they're being altered, or how can I, you know, just naturally continue to eat healthier and do have better practices 
in our home because I had just gotten married. I had also just gotten back from Italy where I had lived for almost four years in an Italian parco with some Italian landlords that grew all of their own food, you know? So oh I also think yeah. that that yeah. was a huge part and a huge influence, you know, in my decision to start. So that's where it all got started was, you know, with my mother being in the garden as a kid and then just the natural progression of, you know, nutrition and wanting to learn more about food and, and then growing my own. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. And I love how, um, where you were living in Italy that they, they just grew all their own food. So I, and I've always been fascinated with, um, with the idea of growing your own food and being, um, you know, having that self-sustainability, you know, being able, not having to run to the grocery store every week, you know, yeah. being able just to walk outside, go to your garden and pick some really super fresh produce. Yeah. You know, I've been doing this so long though. That's just second nature for me now. But when I like think back, you know, where I started, I, okay, I actually didn't start small. <laughs> because it's not my nature, but I think about how I start. And then even just the progression of like making mistakes and like, you know, how I learned along the way. And I think a lot of people, well, this is twofold. Gardening is really big right now because a lot of people are talking about being, you know, self, self self-sufficiency, self-sustaining, you know, the uh, possible food shortages, you know, and all these different things. So I do think it's the vernacular of our culture right now. Um, but I also think there's a lot of people that think, oh, growing a garden, growing your own food, that's for all those homesteaders, you know, and, and truthfully, it's not, you know, truthfully, you can grow an amazing amount of plants on a patio. Um, and I, I definitely want to talk about that. You know, it, it doesn't have to be for the homesteaders. It can be for anyone, no matter what your capacity, no matter where you live. I did a whole, um, what would I call it? I did a whole series about a month and a half ago on indoor gardening and how you can grow a lot of stuff that you cook with, you know, indoors. So I really, first, let me, foremost, let me say like, it's for everyone. If you have any interest at all, do it because that's where you're going to learn. And I just, I feel like once you get started, it's really hard to stop. You know, it's just so much fun and being in nature and working with nature. And um, yeah. Yeah. It's like a roller coaster. Woo. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, and I'm really happy that you mentioned that you can like grow your own. You don't have to be a homesteader because that no. is, I feel, I feel like a common misconception. I mean, my dad, my parents grow vegetables in their backyard. You know, my dad loves it. He always yeah. gets so excited when it's time to plant new vegetables or yeah. even just new flowers. You know, my mom too, you know, my dad's more focuses on the vegetables and my mom's more um with focuses more on the flowers but uh but they don't have a big backyard my dad yeah. just has this raised garden same thing with my in-laws locally you know they have raised garden beds in their backyard and and they grow what they can so if you could share with us like where would be like if someone is in an apartment let's say like where would be the best place for them to start Mm, I have two thoughts. First of all, I say you can definitely start with like the indoor gardening idea with microgreens, you know, microgreens and sprouts are two really easy things to grow that you can grow in your house and, and sprouts, you don't even have to have like grow lights, you know, you don't have to call that, have the whole shebang to do something like that. And then they're like ready to eat in five to seven days. So you can be eating like fresh stuff that you grew. That's super healthy you know, like sprouts and microgreens are, you know, what we would call superfoods in the plant world. Um, mm -hmm. And they're just so easy and quick to grow. So that's a really great place to start. But if you want to be, you know, starting something outside, um, there's a lot of options right now for what's called vertical gardening. And I just did a little clip on a my YouTube channel this uh, two days ago, showing what I, what I grow my vertical plants in. I have a in ground garden, but also on my back porch, I have something called a green stock and there's all variations of this, but it's a vertical garden. It's got seven layers and I'm growing most of my lettuce greens and herbs in that. Mm. And that's taking up literally a square foot, square foot and a half, um, of space, you know? So if you have very minimal space, 
growing vertically like that, you can get a lot of stuff planted vertically. And then I have a an aunt who's always saying, well, I don't have any sun. You know, I don't have any sun anywhere. And I was all, just yeah. going to ask about that. That's so yeah. funny that you just brought that up. Okay, continue. A lot of times people with the patio garden or in the apartment, that's the other thing they struggle with. They don't have a lot of light. So you may not be able to grow very well, like a tomato plant that needs, you know, 12 hours of sunlight, although there's a caveat there. Um, but a lot of your lettuces and your herbs, like cilantro and parsley and the things that people use on a regular basis, um, those only need three to six hours of sunlight. So if you just get some sunlight, then you would be surprised what you can grow. They might grow, some, you know, slower or they might not grow as big as they had full sunlight on them. But a lot of them thrive with that three to six hour window of sunlight. So, you know, so. Yeah, that's cool. I'm glad you brought that up uh, about the sunlight. Mm -hmm. uh, so in regards to sunlight, because you know, there's, there's the artificial like light, mm -hmm. lights that are really great for people who live in climates where it's, you know, like Portland, like the Pacific Northwest, where nine months out of the year it rains. It's yeah. gloomy <laughs> in Michigan. Yes. So have you looked into maybe you know this you know the answer to this or you don't know the answer to this but what kind of effect do those lights have on plants can you use those lights like during the winter or if you have to have an indoor garden with that do the plants like thrive off of that type so of artificial that, sunlight you mean like lights that might, people might have in their house just for mm -hmm. them like to bring light into their indoors and help with mood and things like that. Is that what you're kind of talking about? Yes. Like yes. The ones that help with mood. Yeah. That kind of mimic vitamin D, the vitamin mm -hmm. D we get from the sun. I'll be, I mean, I haven't done studies on it, but what I know as a gardener and what I know from mm -hmm. nutrition is yes, because if it's mimicking the outdoors, I mean, that's what you're doing mm -hmm. with grow lights with a plant. You're mimicking the sun to a certain degree and you're never going to get the intensity of the sun, but you get those full spectrum lights and that's what plants need to grow. Mm -hmm. So my guess would be yes. Now, th this is where you get into the weeds of it. But whenever you're growing plants from seeds, you know, you want to have those grow lights very close to get as much intensity as possible. And the, the lights grow with the plants. But if you have any sort of artificial light like that, you know, in the vicinity, vicinity of a plant, then it's going to receive that light mm -hmm. and it's going to do with it what it can. Does mm -hmm. that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that'd be a fun experiment to do it was. to see what, <laughs> um, cause you know, we live in our van in our camper van and it's kind of difficult for us to keep plants alive in here. Mm. So that might be a fun experiment for, for us to do. Um, so, yeah. Well, and so on, on the lines of experimentation, I, I was just writing about this this morning, but you know, there are those personalities and sometimes meh, I can be one of them where it's like you have to have all the details worked out before you'll try something. But I say in gardening and in life, I feel like gardening mimics life in so many ways. Like you just have to try it. Just get out there and try it. A lot of times what works for one person is not going to work for the other person. So just try it. I mean, what do you have to lose? Um, a, a $3 plant or a $2 packet of seeds. Now, if you go yeah. and invest your life savings in a huge huge garden and maybe you don't want to start there unless you know what you're doing, but in, you know, all things considered, just give it a go and then you'll know. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been gardening for years and like vegetable gardening for 14 years. And every year I still learn something new, you mm -hmm. know, you don't, you got to start somewhere to, to be able to grow in that experience, you know, and that's, yeah, that's the, that's the fun of it. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. That's one thing I love about. Yeah just being in the health and wellness space in general is there's so much, there's always something new to learn. Yep. So, yeah. So you can grow, like you mentioned, you're growing like greens, right? So like lettuce, you mm -hmm. mentioned that lettuce on, in your vertical garden, right? Did you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay. So if we're going to, so on that, like if we're talking about like mm -hmm. a really good place to start, think about growing a salad. You know, grow a salad okay. garden. That is the easiest place to start. Your greens, so your lettuces, even like if you like radishes, radishes, your herbs, that is the easiest 
way, way to start. Um, because those plants can grow between 20 and 40 days. So you put them in the ground or you put them in your vertical planter or however you decide to grow them in 30 days, you could be eating lettuce from your plants, you know, in 30 days, you could stop going to the grocery store, depending on how many, and you don't need that many. You'd be surprised how few plants you need to feed, you know, even a, a family of my size. Um, so yeah. I, I, I think I wrote a blog post said, just stop going to the grocery store, you know, and grow your own greens because they're super easy to grow. They go really quick and they're not fussy plants. Like I said, they don't need that much sunlight. So, you know, grow, grow, up, grow a salad. <laughs> yeah. I love that. And even if you're not like a big salad eater, like you don't like, like I've kind of gotten away from my daily big salads, um, just cause mm -hmm. I just wanted to add some variety, but there's so much you could do with lettuce. Like you throw it on top of a burger, um, uh, sandwiches. If, mm -hmm. if you like to eat sandwiches yep. and like the microgreens, Micro um, yeah. yeah. So what do you do? I'm curious what you do with microgreens. Cause there could be some listeners who are like, first of all, what are microgreens? Cause those aren't very, <laughs> I, I feel like they're not very common. Not there's a lot of people that don't really consume microgreens on a regular basis. Um, yeah. so what can you do with microgreens? A lot. I wish I had my list right in front of me. I should have had my website pulled up over here where I could reference it real quick, but, um, so I think when people think of microgreens initially, they think of like a garnish or, you know, like a five-star restaurant throwing it on top of their little pallet of food, but microgreens can actually be super um, versatile. And there's so many different seeds that you can grow. Um, you can, gosh, I'll, you can grow lettuce, you know, lettuce seeds, broccoli seeds, radish seeds, cabbage seeds, um, you name it. There's a whole list of things that you could grow, go to the dollar store, buy yourself a little packet of broccoli and radish seeds, and then you grow them for a week to two weeks. And then you have all these sunflower seeds are another great one. You can actually make an entire salad if you wanted to out of microgreens, depending on how many you grow. Um, we, I was actually just watching a gal yesterday that grew like a pound of sunflower microgreens in one tray. And she just makes salads out of them. Now to, to define the terms, micro greens are exactly what they are. They're small micro greens. So instead of growing the whole plant, you're literally eating the initial shoot that comes out of the seed and either the first two leaves that pop out or for a little further, what are called the true leaves. So when you, when a plant is germinating, it's going to shoot, uh, send out a shoot, which is like your stem and a root which I think everyone knows what a root is. And then from that, you get your first set of leaves, which are from the seed. And then another set of leaves, which are called the true leaves. And at that point you can eat your microgreens and that can take again, anywhere from a week to two weeks. So all the nutrition that that plant needed to get going is in that one little plant. It's like you're eating a whole plant's worth of nutrition, but in this one little you know, and that's where that superfood component comes in, but you can put them in salads. You can put them on sandwiches. You can throw them on top of uh, like stir fries at the, like the last minute mm -hmm. to throw them on top and mm -hmm. get that extra crunch. Um, I wish I had my list in front of me. You can throw them in like a mixture of like, if I do a coleslaw, you know, or I'm chopping mm -hmm. up cabbage and all the different greens, I'll throw them in there. I mean, pretty much you can throw them in anything, throw them in a burrito, throw them in a wrap, put them on your eggs in the morning. You know, if you do like eggs and kale or eggs and spinach, throw some microgreens in there, pretty much anywhere that you would use like kale or, you know, chopped up cabbage or lettuce, you can use a microgreen. Um, but if you only have the capacity to grow your own food on your kitchen counter, well then grow some microgreens and save yourself a trip to the grocery store. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Yeah. I love that. Um, yeah, there's so yeah. Microgreens are so versatile. So they really are. yeah, definitely. And you get the nutrients, mm -hmm. you know, the micronutrients from them. Um, yeah. And thanks for that education on, I mean, you know, how, how the plants yeah. actually, actually grow the yeah. process. Um, because that's something I wasn't completely a hundred percent familiar with. And obviously I know roots and stems, but, yeah. um, the rest of it, um, I, wasn't really quite knowledgeable about it. So I appreciate you sharing that. And I'm going to put Landon's, Landon's website will be in the show notes. And if 
when you have a chance, just check out Landon's website because it's amazing. It's chock full of like really great information. And I went to your YouTube channel yesterday too, and you have so many great like tutorial videos on there that are so beneficial and they're not that long in length either so you don't have to spend hours and hours i mean you can do a deep dive <laughs> you could like get lost in landon's youtube channel i think um, but there's a lot of really great information um, on her youtube channel so go definitely check it out but back to our conversation um cool so what would be what would be the net this like the first step for someone um who has the who has like a yard so the ability okay. to have like a raised bed or an in-ground mm -hmm. bed just what would you suggest um i so I, I did a series of workshops i'm still finishing up that series of workshops that started back in january and the whole idea behind this what i called the winter workshop season was helping you prepare uh for the upcoming spring season. So we're going to be looking at, you know, all the different questions that you need to ask yourself to know exactly what you want to grow, how much you want to grow, how you want to grow it, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm thinking back to that, my initial course where I said, let's go through the five W's, right? Why are you growing a garden? No, you know, know your why, which this, you know, we say, talk about all this time mm -hmm. in Christian, right? Know yeah. your why because you want to give it a shot because you want to be out in nature because you want to grow your own food. How much of your own food do you want to try to grow? You know, when you want to grow a salad, do you want to try to go 25% of your food? You know, have a good idea of why you're doing it first. You know, who are you growing for? Are you growing for just you, for you and your husband, for you and your family? Are you wanting to grow food that you can hand out to your neighbors? Maybe you're going in the direction that we're going this year and growing food for uh, our extra food for the farmer's market, right? So having those parameters in line also can help you know like where you want to start. And so all of this is leading into the fact of if you're starting small, right, you know that you're just trying to get a salad garden. You just want to grow a, a kitchen salad garden. Well, then you can kind of estimate the, the space that you need to work with. Maybe you're just going to start off with a four by six raised bed. You know, you can fit a lot of food mm -hmm. in a four by six raised bed, especially if you're doing, you know, going the salad garden route. But you want to ask yourself the question, these questions, because if you're like me, well, there's two different, two different people here. You have the person like me that goes to a garden store and it's like, woo, look at all these things I want to grow. And you just get lost in the seed packets and you want to grow every variety of radish and every variety of, you know, whatever. Or the other person that who's starting out and you go to the store and you're like, I have no idea where to start, right? I have, I have no idea. Um, and then you, you walk out maybe with a couple of seed packets. So if you can start with a pretty good idea of what you want to try, I want to try a couple of lettuces. I want to try some spinach because I eat spinach all the time. I love kale. Let's grow a kale plant. You know, um, I like radishes. Let's grow a couple of radishes. Those are super, super easy and super quick. So, you know, you want to kind of get these parameters and I have a guidebook on my website in the shop that actually walks you through each of these questions that you can ask. So you're not just shooting from the hip and trying to figure it out with no parameters. Um, and then the other, from there, you can decide if you're also wanting to look at your budget, you know, how much money are you willing to put in up front? Some people are ready to, you know, do the whole shebang and they want, you know, two foot raised beds, four of them with, you know, arched trellises and, you know, all the things. But if you're working, uh, you know, from a, a tight budget, there's still a lot you can do. And I've only ever grown in the ground. I've never had raised beds. Mm -hmm. um, there's not, I have no, nothing against them. They're great, you know, but they're also expensive to so have to get the wood or get a quality material that will last and get your money's worth. You, you're going to put an investment up front. So if you're okay with that, goes for the raised bed option, you know, uh, fill, you can fill your beds with really great soil. Um, but if you're, you know, really watching your budget, then you're going to want to consider 
how you're going to get the weeds out of the wherever you're planting, right? You got to clear the weeds. You got to clear the area. So you're going to need to know about how to do that. And I will tell you right now, it doesn't have to be difficult and you don't have to have a rototiller. <laughs> you know? So I don't want to overwhelm you with information, but these are kind of the questions where you want to start. It kind of depends on where you are with your budget. It kind of depends, like, what kind of person are you? Do you want to ease into it? Or are you ready to go full throttle? And these are some of the questions that I walk people through in my workshops and in my guidebook so that they have a really good, you know, vantage point of where to start. Yeah. Is that too much information or is that a... <laughs> that was great. That was, I feel like it was just enough information. And those are really great questions to, um, to take into consideration, you know, if for anyone who wants to start their own, their own garden. Yeah. So this question popped into my head as you were talking. What about the climate you live in? Mm, what effect yeah. does that have? If you could a share lot. a little bit about that. <laughs> yes, yes. That's actually, that's actually a great, great, great question because depending on where you live is really going to determine a lot of things. And I, I keep going back to like my workshops and my guidebook, but the first thing I always I was writing about this this morning because I'm getting ready to do a workshop for growing an early spring garden. Like what, what foods can you grow right now before you even get the warmer weather and have food on your plate in a month? But in order to do these things, you have to know your seasons. You need to know what's called your uh, last frost date. You need to know uh, what's called maturity dates. Like how long does it take this plant to grow? So if I put this seed in the ground, how long do I have to wait to harvest it? You need to know if that plant likes cool weather. Some plants, if the minute they even sense that the weather is below 50, will die. Some mm. plants like kale love frost and they actually taste better when they've had a frost on them, right? Oh, so, interesting. I didn't know that. That's yeah. so good to know. That's a fun so, fact. As soon as you can work the ground in the late winter, or early spring, get your kale out there because it loves it loves that cold weather and will thrive in it. So what you want to do is you want to go to, I always say the farmer's almanac online and they have a planting guide. So you can literally Google the farmer's almanac planting guide, and it's going to ask you for your zip code. So you're going to put your zip code in there and it'll bring you, because gardening is very specific, very region specific specific. Mm -hmm. So what someone's doing on the east side of Michigan or the northern mission, they're going to have totally different practices than I'm going to have in yeah. southwest Michigan. So you really want to dial into your specific region. So go to that website, it'll you'll enter in that and somewhere on their website according to your zip code, it's going to tell you the average highs and lows per month per your region. And so what you do with that and I actually have what I call a seasonal planning guide. And it's a template where you can write down for every month of the year, what's the average low, what's the average high, and what's the average rainfall. And then the next page, it'll show you which plants you can put in the ground with those temperatures. So basically you're outlining what's a cold season, what's a cool season, what's the warm season, what's a hot season, and which plant families want to grow in those different temperatures. And that seems, wow, that seems a little overwhelming if you haven't been doing this, which is why I really highly recommend that you have something like the guide I was telling you about. Again, it's on my website um, that will help you write all those numbers down and then you can mm -hmm. read it right in front of your face. So um, like right now in my area, I can be planting out carrots and radishes and cauliflower and broccoli and cabbage and kale and spinach and arugula. But if I were to put out tomatoes, bell peppers and eggplants, they would die. Mm -hmm. So you definitely want to know your seasons and you want to know your average last frost date. So if you're in California, you may not even have one. What are your temperatures like right now? Yeah. Um, overnight lows have been into been, I mean, it's kind of varied. It, most of them have been into the high thirties, low forties. Okay. Averaging this winter. It's been an unusually cold winter. Okay. This yeah. year. So, but, and obviously temperatures change per year, yeah. year to year, but the um, farmer's almanac, they'll look at like the um, trends mm -hmm. of the year. And then they base your frost dates on that. 
So if, for example, here in Southwest Michigan, our last frost date is estimated to be May 5th. So what I know is May 5th, um, right around there, and I'll even give it a few extra days just to be careful, is when I can start putting out plants that don't like the cold. They don't like the frost. The minute the frost hits them, they die. So I know that starting May 5th is when I can start putting out my tomatoes and my bell peppers and my eggplants and my thyme and oregano and all those things. Um, and then it also helps me know if I'm starting those plants indoors, how many weeks before that date I can start them indoors so they're the right maturity to go out, right? Mm. So that prostate kind of in handy if you're you know, starting your own plants, but it's also just handy to know if you're buying a plant from the store to put on your patio or whatever, you don't want to put certain plants out before that frost date or they'll, they'll die. Um, so you definitely want to know that information before, before you go yeah. putting all your precious plants out in the ground. Whether, yeah. You know, however you choose to do it. Yeah. I think that's really neat also that the farmer's almanac with the farmer's almanac, you could put your zip code in because even just like an hour, hour and a half north of us, it's just wine. That's when wine country pretty oh, much starts yeah. from in central California. Yeah. So, but it, it doesn't seem like it's that far away. It's only like an hour, hour and a half drive, but you can't grow. You wouldn't be able to grow grapes here where we live in the Thousand Oaks, Newberry Park area. But up there, they get a lot of the moisture from the ocean. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a lit, bit more humid there than it is and damp than it is down here. It's can be very dry here where we live, but yeah. And that's, I mean, those are, yeah. Those are things that like that, that comes with time and experience. Yeah. And, um, I actually learned something uh, like a week ago that I wasn't really aware of for my area. Cause I've only been growing here for three ish, three ish, four years when I moved to Michigan from Oklahoma, which was a totally different climate. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so just you again it's just time and experience and practice and, you know get to know people in your area who maybe garden or look at people you know uh online that in your vicinity and they can be able to give you some really good advice you know per your area but if i'm going to tell you where to start know your last frost date read the seed packets of if you're doing seeds or even if you're buying a plant it'll tell you um, the temperature that that plant likes or doesn't like, it'll say frost hardy, which means you can put it out when it's cold and it'll say, um, or frost tolerant. Uh, those are two terms for the plants that you like that like the cold weather, or it'll say non, I'm trying to think of the terms, you know, non frost hardy or doesn't like frost. Those are the plants you want to wait. So as long as you have that last frost date, that's how you can kind of gauge what to put out in the garden. And then you're always going to have the year that you put things out and there's a late frost and you mm -hmm. just cover those things with sheets and they'll be fine. But, you know, just, I would say, ask yourself, what are the things that you love to eat? Do you eat a lot of salad? Do you love kale? Do you love spinach? Are you just love yourself a good tomato? Start with those plants, find the things that you eat often that you really enjoy and start with those things. And then just make sure, you know, um, whether you just Google it or if you're, you know, buying a seed packet or a plant, it'll tell you on there, you know, which temperatures they like. And then I'll give you a baseline for when to put those things, you know, in the ground or in a vertical planter, um, however you choose to do it. Yeah. So there's some research to be done. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, which is great. You know, I love that. And cause yeah, cause it's, it's important to know, yeah, what you're, what climate you're in and you know if you don't know anything just read the packet the seed packet i did know i have noticed that that's that there's a, some good simple just straightforward information on seed packets oh yeah i'll tell you it's really helpful yeah i mean it's basically yeah. exactly what the plant needs so um now i will tell you this just literally popped into my brain while i was thinking about it um i have a book that I love to death. It's my all time favorite gardening book that I recommend anyone get. And it's an old one. So you can get it for pretty cheap, but it's called lasagna gardening. Lasagna gardening. Lasagna gardening. And the whole premise behind lasagna gardening is you're building from the ground up layers like lasagna of organic matter 
that basically you don't have to till the ground. So if you're going to do an in-ground garden, this is a way you can do it that you don't have to ever go to tiller. You don't have to do a ton of digging. You're actually in the book will walk you through it all, but everything you see me do in any of my videos, I'm always doing this method. It's all I've ever done. It's what I love. Um, but that was the book that I got started with. And again, I have no idea how I came across this book, but I love it. Love it. Love it. And I'm assuming that that in that book, it told me these very basic things about when to put plants in the ground. Because when I first started, I grew everything in pots everything. I had tomatoes, peppers, herbs. I don't even remember. I had tons of seeds that I bought. I started off learned my gardening journey growing from seed, which is crazy because most people don't do that. Um, but I couldn't plant in the ground because we're, we were on a military base and apparently the ground was um, contaminated. Oh, so okay. Yeah. You don't want that. You don't want that. So I was really disappointed when I found that out, but I just adjusted and um, I used the lasagna gardening technique in these big lots pots. I bought a ton of them and my whole yard was just covered with pots. And I don't even remember if I knew what the frost date was at that point. I don't, I don't even remember, but everything did great. So I'm assuming that lasagna gardening book kind of gave me the general idea, but all that to say, like, just jump in and go for it. I gave you some really great starting knowledge, you know, but just, mm -hmm just jump in and go for it because that's how I learned, you know, I mean, I just learned, oh, okay, that didn't work so well. Or, um, you know, I struggled with tomatoes for years that the minute I moved to Michigan, man, I became the tomato gardener, but I didn't, you know, I didn't let failure or mistakes mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. wanting to learn how to grow. So. Yeah. Yes. Gardening does mimic life. You really? have to keep, keep, making mistakes and keep learning from those mistakes yep. and like i love how you just use the word you had to adjust because <laughs> you know, that's what we do you know yeah. we 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 do something it doesn't work out we make a mistake and we quote unquote fail and then we have to adjust or pivot and just find a solution so mm -hmm. that's and great every, every gardener whether they're a master gardener or you know, or, or whatever, every gardener will tell you that every year there's something that doesn't grow. <laughs> there's something that doesn't do what it's supposed to do every year. And, um, but that, you know, that is the point where you learn like, okay, why did this not work this year? And it worked last year, or, you know, you just learned to let, you know, water drip off your back, you know, like, okay, well, well, yeah. we're not going to, you know, become a black thumb because that one thing didn't work out, but that that's like the growing curve. There's just always something that doesn't work out. And you just pit, like you said, you pivot, you learn, you pivot, yeah. and you, you move forward. Um, yeah. And let, you know, like with the, you know, the seasons are so different. So in so many parts of the United States, I mean, all over the world this year, but I know my dad, you know, will tell me the lot, they live in Austin, Texas, and uh -huh. some years, some of his, uh, his vegetables thrive and other years, he's like, it was so cold. We had so many freezing cold nights that everything just died and he just lost everything. So. Yeah. I mean, talk to the farmers. They deal with that every year. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oh, so, but my, yeah. yeah. But, but my dad keeps every, all the time. He's constantly planting something new in his garden. So. Yeah. Um, well, and you know, I'll tell you, like, the, I think the motivating factor behind all of it is like, once you are, once you've been out there and you've been in the soil and you've, you drinking in the sunshine and the fresh air, it's just a haven. It, it is my haven. So I have five mm -hmm. kids, love them all, but there is something about just being out in the garden in the early morning or there, you know, late evening by myself with my plants and the dirt and just, it is so invigorating. And mm -hmm. I believe that we were created to be in nature and to yeah. hone in nature and to, there's a word that I'm wanting to use and I can't think of it, not master, but something along those terms. Mm -hmm. And it just does our soul and our bodies and our minds good to be doing that. Even if you're doing microgreens in your kitchen as a starting point, there's just something about honing that skill of, you know, growing your own food or just being with nature in some sense, form or fashion that, is it's just good for your soul. I agree with you 100% on that. And I also believe it's really just in our genes. 
-hmm. in our DNA. You know, think about our ancestors tens of millions of thousands of years ago, tens of millions of thousands, that didn't make any sense, but you know, like ten, like tens of thousands of years ago and then millions of years ago, how did they get food? They didn't go to the grocery store. You know, they hunted for their meat and then they grew, they dug up their food their produce from the ground and they got their hands dirty. And you also get that really good, healthy bacteria mm -hmm. from the dirt, which is really good for our gut, which is great for our overall health. And it's, we get those negative ions too from the dirt, which help boost our mood. And cause you, you were just like raving about how invigorating gardening makes you oh, feel. Yeah. And there's actually, there's actually science behind that. Yeah. To support that. Yeah. yeah so. I did a blog post this week, you know, how gardening saved my life. And when I think back to like, when I was really getting into it, there were some things going on in my world that very well could have just done me in. And I really believe that not, not that gardening was the only saving grace, but it was a huge saving grace mm. it was a place to, it was, a, it was a place of solstice. It was a place of creativity. I mean, I'm a very creative person and the garden for me is like my canvas to go out and be artistic and to put things where I want to put them and add flowers and pops of color and different varieties of plants. It, it allows, it's like that artistic output for me. Um, something that I've grown from this itty bitty little seed that is now producing food for our family. There's just, there's so many benefits to trying to grow, even if it's just a flower. I mean, I'm talking a lot about growing your own food, but growing flowers mm -hmm. is amazing for your soul as well. Especially if you're a person that loves beauty and art, Yeah, oh, there are so many varieties of just gorgeous flowers out there. You just, you will never be able to grow them all. Um, yeah. but it's just, if you are someone that struggles with like mental health, you know, anxiety, d depression, anything along those lines, grow a garden. You would, you would not believe the difference that it'll do just in your mental health. Yeah. I love that. I know my mom's all about the flowers. My dad's more, <laughs> he has, he's more knowledgeable, more excited about growing the food. And my mom is more excited about growing the flowers. And like, she loves seeing like the poppies and whenever they travel and they see like just blankets of oh, yeah. fresh flowers that are blooming, she's always just snapping all these photos and, and, um, so yeah. And I love how you talked about like gardening is your, one of your ways to express your creativity, because I, I feel like people think of creativity and I talk a lot about this in my coaching practice is mm -hmm. a lot of people think about creativity of like drawing or painting or writing. Yeah. you know, being creative. And I'm always, I've always thought like, there's so many different ways you could be creative. For me, one reason why I would garden, uh, why I want to start a garden is so I could make delicious food and create new recipes. Cause that's where I feel like my artistic talent is programming where fitness, <laughs> for fit, fitness programs and cooking in the kitchen. I love being in the kitchen and just trying new foods, trying new flavor combinations. Yeah. And that's where my artistic creativity really shines for me. And so really like seeing, seeing the garden, the gardening as part of your artistic creativity is, is a f I feel like super important. And then that, that in turn, not only does like like touching the dirt and dealing with the dirt and getting it on your fingers and on your mm -hmm. hands to improve yeah. your mood, like from a scientific perspective, but just from like, like you talked about, like it just lifts up your soul. It really does. You know? So, yeah. 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 So I just had this vision of like, um, you know, your van and your, you know, cuisine garden that you could grow outside your van and pots, you know, there's so many different flavors of greens, whether you're growing like a mustard green mix or arugula or different lettuces, you know, and then all your different herbs and all those things are so easy to grow. You could, you could do, <laughs> you could create so many just amazing dishes, just sauces and salads and all different kinds of things, just from those things growing in pots outside your van. So I do hope that you give it a try because you might be really surprised. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely going to do that. Um,
So I'd like to kind of like shift gears a little bit and just talk about a real life experience that you just had yeah. recently, if you don't mm -hmm. mind sharing mind about um, the lovely and exciting ice storm that you <laughs> you just went through. The weather this year is just like we have people as of this recording in Big Bear in Southern California, they're still stuck from the storm from two weeks ago. They're literally stuck in their houses and it's just, they're running out of food and a grocery store in the area, the roof literally collapsed mm -hmm. because of I snow. Oh, wow. Yes. Okay. It's nuts. Where it's great. It's crazy. I just read an article the other day about a woman who went into labor oh, during wow. the storm and she had to like, she, and thankfully that Thankfully, her husband um, got her to the hospital in time because the baby's, the umbilical cord was wrapped around the baby's neck. So mm -hmm. she was like, thank goodness that we were at a hospital because if she would have, you know, given birth to her child at home, she's like, I, I wouldn't have known what to do. And um, anyway, so, so the weather is just nuts this year, you know, as of this recording, we're supposed to have another heavy rainfall tomorrow down in Southern California up to the central coast. So it's just, the weather's just nuts this year. So if you wouldn't mind just kind of sharing a little bit about your, your exciting weather. <laughs> yeah. So um, when I moved to Michigan, 2019, um, it's where I really like expanded my garden and really brought in like hundreds of pounds of food. And that is where I kind of started learning how to preserve it. Um, I don't even know if that was initially like my plan, but I grew I brought in so much food. I'm like, I've got to do something with this. So I started learning how to can, how to, you know, freeze, uh, different foods. And, um, that has been a whole nother learning curve that has been a lot of fun. And, um, so I've, it's been, uh, it's just been fun. I don't know how else to say it. Like to, to not only grow my own food, but then I have a whole pantry, now of things that I've grown and I've canned. And so it has eliminated our need to go to the grocery store um, a lot. However, when you don't have, when you have the grocery store like readily available, you'd be surprised how much you forget about the things that you've actually mm. preserved. Sure. <laughs> I, can, I, can, I, understand, I can understand that. <laughs> yeah. So I don't even know, like, mm. three weeks ago, two weeks ago, we had a really bad ice storm here that knocked out power for almost, I mean, all across Michigan. And so we didn't have power and out in the country when you don't have power, you don't have water. Um, and so we had a gas stove. Some people didn't even have a gas stove and we were running a generator and it was not fun. It was not fun at all. However, I am really thankful for all the things that I had preserved um, because we were able, able to eat off of that almost for every meal. Um, I, I don't even think we had gone to the grocery store before everything hit. I don't even know if we were, we weren't even really aware it was happening. My dad in Oklahoma actually reached out to me. He was like, are you aware of what's about to happen? Are you prepared? And actually I was very confidently able to say, we actually are prepared. We have a ton of food. You know, we harvested our own chickens this past year. So our freezer is full of meat. Um, it's going to be cold enough that those things will be preserved. And I have a whole, you know, pantry in my, my room full of, tomato sauce and all the different things that I preserved. And so that was, I don't want to say it was a cool experience because it was not fun, but it was great to have all that food right there. And we weren't having to run to the grocery store. We weren't having to worry about, you know, things being out of stock. We could have eaten off that for weeks if we wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, in the, in light of the whole self-sufficiency and, you know, being able to have, not be so dependent on the food chain mm -hmm. Learn to preserve your food it can be as simple as growing, uh, you know, carrots, chopping them up and putting them in your freezer or as complicated, which I don't really think it's that complicated as learning how to can your own tomato sauce. I have not bought a can of, or a jar of tomato sauce, diced tomatoes, pizza sauce, or anything um, for well over a year. And it is so fun to walk into my pantry and get my own sauce because we have pizza night every Friday night. Mm. 
that, that's just been fun. I made my own pickles. I've made my own pickled jalapenos so I can get those out anytime. Anytime we have a potluck, I'm taking all my stuff that I've canned and people love it. It's just, it, it's um, not common, I guess, you know, for most people to know that they, they can preserve their own food that they grow. So I mean, that was the experience was just being able to actually experience mm-hmm. being self-sufficient from the things that we had grown and harvested on our property. Um, I wouldn't wish it on anyone, but I'm really glad that we had what we had. So we weren't having to worry about getting food from anywhere else. Yeah. Cause that, that's a stressful situation to begin with, <laughs> you know, cause not only are you, you don't have power, you don't have heat, you know, you just said that where you, we, where you guys live out in the country, when you don't have power, you don't have water. Yeah. So I know I remember um, when you and I were texting, I was trying to, Scott was like, oh my gosh, is Landon okay? Like ask her this, I'm like, I'm not gonna blow up her phone right now because she has no power. Um, but anyways, um, I remember you saying that you guys had like 45 gallons of water. So you guys were mm-hmm. set there you, that your husband, you know, is always prepared oh and yeah. and I. I, my husband's like that as well. So I could totally relate to that, which is, which is a good thing. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's, I, I know when in Austin last year, the year before, I think it was two years ago, there was a freeze and there was some areas of Texas that were out of power for like a week or two. Yeah. That was crazy. Yeah. And I remember my sister saying, that they were going outside and getting snow and filling up the bathtub for like three or four days just so they could flush the toilet. Yes. <laughs> because they had, had no running yeah. water because the, the system was broken. So anyway, so not only do you have to worry about that, you know, like, can I even flush the toilet, you know, <laughs> and bathing, which if you're not going anywhere, it's, not that big of a deal, I guess, <laughs> but I yeah. mean, um, but also then like, e- even if like the grocery stores are open, are the roads safe enough to drive on? That's the other thing to stress you to worry about. Like, even if you can go to the grocery store and there is food there available, like, can you even get there? Yeah. Um, you know, we can't plan for, I mean, we can to an extent, right. Plan right. for weather, but there's a lot of times that you can't. And I just think it's really good to have some sort of, you know, just skill or preparation to be able to handle that situation and not find yourself completely stressed out and, you know, in horror of like, what the heck are we going to do? So even learning how to grow a simple plant from seed, you could grow my, you could grow sprouts in your kitchen with no light, you know, water in a week, if you had to, you know, just having a simple That learning to put away water, you know, save your milk gallon. This is what we do. We save our milk gallon jugs when we have them. We fill them with water. We keep them in our basement. Um, and that way we can give water to our animals. We can put water in our toilets if we need to. We, you know, like wash our hands. There's just like simple, we're going on like a whole nother rabbit hole, but all this kind of harkens back to growing your own food and having some sort of self-sustaining skill that you can lean on uh, because, these things are going to happen no matter where in the country Mm -hmm. you are. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing your experience, your real life, your IRL in real life experience. Um, um, So tell us a little bit about how you work with your, with your clients um, within your gardening business. Well, mostly, mostly I'm just putting out, um, resources for people. Um, I started this whole thing of teaching back during COVID when I was just posting videos on my Facebook page about <clears throat> starting plants from seed. I don't know even what inspired me to do that, but I said, eh, I'll just share it. And then I had people start reaching out to me like, will you do more of this? Can you like really teach us? And I thought, okay. So in 24 hours, I set up a Facebook group, which is still there. It's called the gardening forum. It's a private Facebook group. And, um, I just started posting videos of everything I was doing, whether I was starting a plant from seed, how I would prune it, 
how I grow it, you know, how to deal with pests because there's going to be pests in the garden. Most of my gardening, if not all is organic. So how to do organic gardening and not be reliant on, you know, synthetic fertilizers. So the gardening forum is just kind of like, it's just what it is. It's a forum where anyone uh, can post pictures, Q and A, anything about their garden. And that's where it started. And then from there, this past year, my husband really encouraged me to take it to a different level of actually doing like full on workshops. So that's what I started this past January and actually putting out um, workshops that are geared around a specific topic. I'm going to walk you from this point, step-by-step to this point. I have um, video and audio formats, however you want to listen to it or watch it. And then I've been creating guidebooks um, that people can buy separately or with the workshop that'll, you know, walk you step-by-step, you know, through a written form. And so that's kind of what I've been really putting my, my efforts to, or these resources, I call them garden education resources. But the other thing that I offer both virtually and in person are garden consults. So that's where I spend an hour with you either on your property or if we're doing it virtually. So you can say, this is my space, whether you have it existing or not, tell me what you want to grow. So I'm basically taking all the research (laughs) away from you. You don't have to do all the research. I'll do it for you. So tell me what you want to grow. What are your goals? You know, uh, what foods do you like to eat? And I'll basically help you come up with a plan on how to grow your garden, where to grow it, what plants to grow, and even how to arrange them. So if you want like a shortcut to getting your garden growing, that's what those garden consults are for, um, helping take away a lot of the guesswork, a lot of the overwhelm that someone can experience, whether they're starting from scratch, or maybe they just haven't had a lot of success um, with gardens they've tried in the past. So I offer both of those things, you know, workshops that you can purchase and work through on your own, or a consult where I can actually work with you one-on-one to get things moving. And then my YouTube channel is just full of all the videos I've ever done in the past from the last, this, this house we're on now and the house we were on previously. And so I just actually recently organized and I'm still organizing them in topics of like cabbage, potatoes, you know, whatever you can go and click on one of those playlists and kind of just watch an in, you know, real time tutorial or vlog style um, education. That's kind of, that's what I'm doing currently. That's awesome. I love, love the structure. I love that structure of all the free content on your YouTube channel and then offering the workshops, which are more self-paced. Mm-hmm. It sounded like, sounds like, and then if you need, you just need that extra layer, that extra little bit of expertise, you know, people can reach out to you and have a, a one-on-one with you. There's nothing more powerful than really connecting with an expert live, whether it be in person or virtually. I've always been a big believer of that. So having that mentorship in a way. So well, and just like with nutrition, everyone's situation and story is different. Mm-hmm. So when I'm able to dial in with someone one-on-one that I can really hear like, you know, what they're wanting to do and what their roadblocks have been. And then, you know, just walk you through the process. And I actually also love designing gardens. I've offered garden design in the past. That takes a lot, you know, that's a lot of time. So I kind of just put on the side when I'm talking to someone, like, if you need help designing, I can do that too for, you know, an extra price. But sometimes, um, you know, just knowing where to put things in the garden can be really stumping for someone. So Mm -hmm. I do love designing gardens as well. So That's cool. Yeah. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. So Landon is your (laughs) go-to gardening expert (laughs) for whatever you're looking for. So she'll help you get started and take the next step and, and do the research for you if you don't want to do it. I mean, there's uh, honestly, there's so much value in investing your money in, in a service like yours where that's saving you time and in the long run it's going to save you money yeah probably Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah not having to drive to the store as frequently (laughs) and just not having to spend the money on the extra money on on produce and um yeah i i'll be honest like you're getting quite a deal for a hundred dollar consult because um especially if you're starting from scratch to have someone just tell you do this (laughs) don't do this. And then you, you take the reins from there and go, 
Um, I didn't have anyone doing that for me. You know, I just, I figured it out as I've gone. And of course I have my YouTube channels that I follow and watch, but that's a lot of time to like invest in watching. Sometimes I just have it on constant play while I'm in the kitchen, you know, um, and there's nothing wrong with that. But if you want to cut to the chase, like just tell me what I need to do. I mean, that's where the value in the one-on-one comes in handy. So yeah, there's plenty out there. Um, if yeah. you want to get started, just get started. That's my biggest encouragement. Like, don't don't let the the black thumb keep you back. Don't let the overwhelm. Just get going. Go buy some microgreens. Go grow grow a little, you know, herb plant, and just get your hands dirty. And that's the best way to get going. Yeah, I agree. I agree. <laughs> just just go do it. Go do it. Just go start somewhere. So. <laughs> Awesome. Well, is there anything else you'd like to share with everyone before we wrap up? I think we pretty much covered it. I would say if you, if you really want to start, like just, um, there's so many resources out there, but if you just need like go here, you can go to my website. That's a great place to start. And from there, it leads you to my YouTube channel or to the gardening forum. If you want to hop on there, um, just start somewhere and do it right now while you're thinking about it <laughs> because otherwise yes. it's off in your file cabinet of to-do lists and, you know, just get going on something. And that's probably my biggest encouragement because the yes. season is upon us. The yes, on. definitely. Yes. So go to the show notes right now <laughs> and click on Landon's website and just save that in your browser. Just get that first step done. Okay. That way it's up. It's ready to go when you're when you're ready to look at it. So awesome. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Landon. This was such a fun conversation. Uh, it's something a new challenge for me too to yeah, add into I my life you, is to see pictures of you know what you decide to do. This year. Yes, I'll definitely keep you posted and updated on 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 what I'm doing with my little my little mini garden. So yeah. Awesome. A lot with a little. So yeah, cool. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining me today, Landon. I appreciate yeah. We'll talk to you soon. Yeah, thanks, Melissa. The Wellness Abundance Podcast is sponsored by Wellness Abundance Coaching. At Wellness Abundance Coaching, we help women lose weight effortlessly and minimize anxiety with clarity, empowerment, and flexibility. We offer one-on-one and group health coaching, corporate wellness programs, and on-demand fitness videos. To learn more about how we can help you become the healthiest version of yourself and to schedule a time to chat with us, visit melissaking.net.